We are so excited to be here with our education, workforce development, advocacy and action podcast. Um, feels like we were just in here talking and here we are again. So I got my sidekick over here, my co-host, Mr. Jeff Taylor, Piedmont Healthcare. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's always good to see you, Shannon. Yeah. And uh, today we are really excited. We have Tim Woody, who is the Director of Career Technical Education for Ardell Statesville Schools. And first of all, I just want to say, Tim, thanks for the time that you take to work with us on Education and Workforce Development, our committee, and, and the great input that we get from you guys. And just thank you for what you're doing for companies like Piedmont Healthcare and for the other industries here in Ardell County, trying to help us find places for the kids maybe that aren't going to go into four-year universities or, you know, trying to make sure that every kid, when they get out of high school, that they have an avenue that they can take to, and we hope to keep them here in Ardell County, but, um, but, you know, to give them a, um, a career and uh, it's very exciting. So we, we say thank you um, for all that you guys do. And um, we're today excited to learn about what new and exciting things are happening with Ardell Statesville Schools. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff. And thank you guys for the support that we receive from educators from the chamber, but also from businesses like mm -hmm. Piedmont Healthcare. Without you guys, we couldn't do what we do. So it's mm -hmm. truly a partnership that Absolutely. really helps us dive into mm -hmm. um, helping those students. Because in Ardell County, we have about 70% of our students who do not go off to four-year universities. So that's 70% of our students who really need to work hard right. uh, to figure out and find a way and a place for them um, as they get into high school and as they get set to graduate. So we're excited to to be a part of that and to be of Iredale County with so many leaders we have in the district to work uh, together. I think 70%. That's, I mean, that's a big number that we don't really, I mean, we think about it a lot because we talk about it, but that, the, the, the probably the normal person on the street doesn't realize that that's the statistic on that. No, and that is the average. It's not that way, of sure. course, at every high school, but mm -hmm. that's our average across the mm -hmm. board. And when you talk to people about it, they are kind of surprised mm -hmm. because I think that, you know, in the 90s, we pushed college, college, mm -hmm. college was everywhere. And still, college has its Absolutely. place today. Don't let Absolutely. me get anyone wrong by saying mm -hmm. that. But um, I just think that it, there's been a paradigm shift where it probably at one point was more 60 40, mm -hmm. and now it's more 70 30. And um, that's a nature, I think, to how business and industry mm -hmm. have changed over time. And it it's become more attractive right. for students to go directly into employment after high school. Right. So what are some things that y'all are working on in that space? Uh, well, a lot of things uh, working. We have um, landed a career and college readiness platform called Major Clarity, mm -hmm. and that has really been a um, the foundation of what we've tried to do and create a a really strong career development continuum out of Major Clarity. And what Major Clarity does is allow students to get in and they can take career interest inventories and uh, kind of find out who they are, starting with fifth grade, and get some interest in there. So over time, I look at it like a funnel that starts at the top and then it kind of goes, by the time they get to 10th grade, it's very narrowed. Mm -hmm. So because of what we've taught them over time and exposed them to, hopefully they're able to make a better decision. But they can also use it to um, career explore over 74 different career fields oh. uh, virtually and take a dive into that. Mm -hmm. They can also, when they get into high school, utilize it for resume writing. Uh, we have a huge work-based learning component inside of Major Clarity that students can learn about internships, pre-apprenticeships, apprenticeships, and we're hoping this year to add a part-time job board for oh. students who maybe want to work part-time awesome. you know, after school and those oh, kind of things, great. just as another outlet to serve those kids mm -hmm. in that um in that space with major clarity. I love the program and it's so cool because Tim, you've been there and you've worked with us with our kids at Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. And we have the majority of our kids there are middle schoolers and they're trying to figure it out. And it never fails when, when I'm sitting down talking to them, I'm like, so what career path, what are you thinking when you get from seventh, eighth grade mm -hmm. and you know, for your future, always NFL, MBA, you know, there's something. So my YouTuber. first, yeah, YouTuber, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the, and there, and sure. my, my next question to them is, what about a backup plan? Yeah. Do you have one of those? Because uh, not yeah. everybody's going to make it. Those are you know. small percentages of people. Exactly, right? exactly. That's true. And you hit on a big one: his influencer. I think today, mm -hmm. you know, kids obviously have the dream of being a pro athlete, and no one wants to, you know, step on those dreams. Absolutely. But we also want to give them, like Jeff said, a backup plan mm -hmm. for that, and letting them realize that while you're practicing and doing those things that's outside of school and what you're building on those com those competitive fields, mm -hmm. what you do inside the classroom is really what that backup plan is. Exactly. That's, that's where, 
Yeah, that's where we try to focus in with major mm-hmm. clarity and just get them uh, exposed. So the whole idea of our career development continuum is really for kids to start really, and we base it on what we call the eight degrees of E. And really from kindergarten through fourth grade, we're working this year for the first year to work with a couple of elementary schools who were piloting a little program for us to see that if we can get K-4 students to just think a little bit broader than fireman, police officer, or a doctor, that they all want to be when they're small. Mm -hmm. But we want to try to give them an outlet to just very high level, Mm -hmm. what are some other jobs or careers out there, so that when they get into fifth grade and we start talking about careers, they have an understanding of that. Because we really want to work with fifth and sixth graders to really expose them to all we can. Mm -hmm. Then to take them in sixth and seventh grade, or seventh and eighth grade, some of those things they've really been exposed to, dive deeper into one they really like to explore deeper. And then in ninth and 10th grade, we want to take those explorations deeper into a couple they may like and let them do some virtual job shadowing opportunities virtually. And that gives them a whole goal for us is to be able to declare their E at the end of 10th grade, which is either going to be employed, educated, or enrolled. Are they going to be um, enlisted enlisted or be an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. And so really, we want them to figure out what that avenue is Mm -hmm. going to be so then we can kind of be a value add for them those last two years and help them find a destination along that avenue E that they've chosen. I like that y'all added entrepreneurship. That's wonderful. Well, it's blooming out there. It really is. It really is, and there's opportunities Mm -hmm. because today it is E. I won't say it's easy, but there's opportunities more abound today Mm -hmm. than there ever have been for our youth to be entrepreneurs, Uh, whether it's web-based or whether it's uh, having a a business from home. Mm -hmm. uh, There's all sorts of entrepreneurial things, and I think we need to do all we can to kind of engage that spirit some because Mm -hmm. lots of the same skills that we find in all of those to make us successful can also help them to be an entrepreneur That's as well. Right. And so many opportunities. Mm-hmm. And it is so awesome because parents like me, we know the standard jobs, the nurse, mm-hmm. the you know, especially in healthcare, the nurse, the doctor, those kind of things. Sure. But but I, I know the first time we took my middle son um, to, to university and he was looking, the dean talked about um, Russian studies mm-hmm. as, as, a, as a potential major. And I looked over at my wife and I was like, what is he even talking about? <laughs> That's not something that I'm aware of. What is he talking about here? And so, but there's just so many opportunities. And I know parents like me, and, you know, we don't always know what opportunities there are. And I think it's amazing that you're trying to, you know, to help those kids find a direction that they really want to go and be successful in. Mm-hmm. And we're really trying to get the students and the teachers to communicate in uh, grades five through uh, 10 is to really communicate home with parents that they're in major clarity. Parents can log in to kind of see what they're doing, kind of gauge in there and kind of see what their interests are for their kids. And sometimes the parents are surprised at what their kids really want to do because it is really hard as a parent, I think, mm-hmm. sometimes to let a kid kind of have those wings and fly a little when it comes to career exploration and kind of deciding what they want to do. Uh, I mean, case in point, my own son um, was graduating from high school. And of course, my expectation was uh, that he was going off to college. And he came to me his senior year and said, Dad, I don't want to go off to college. And I'm like, what? (laughs) And so we had a long conversation about that, but he really was into cars, and I blame the Fast and the Furious (laughs) franchise for that, because when he was 13, that was really big. And so long story short, he uh, rebuilt an uh, an engine in a vehicle with my father, and he really got hooked into that, and he said, I really think I want to do something in automotive. I said, I'll give you six months to try it. He went to a Honda dealership and worked as and changed oil. And I'm proud to say that today he never looked back. He's a master certified technician now at a Honda dealership. Wonderful. That is and amazing. loves life. And you know what? It's what he wants to do. Yeah. Exactly. It's not what I wanted right. to do, but it's what he wanted mm-hmm. to do. And that's, I think, sometimes the hardest part for parents is to be able to support our, our their kids and get them into the fields that they think they might be interested in, but then let them explore some. Mm-hmm. Excellent. We're seeing a little shift at my house. I mean, I joke about the being an influencer or YouTuber. That is still a very interesting sure. and NFL mm-hmm. for one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have started hearing a little more about, well, I really like computers. So maybe computer science, you mm-hmm. know. So some of that has to do with, I'm sure, with things that they're learning at school and mom saying, what's your backup plan? Because right. I say that all the time. You well, know? exactly. And that's the thing. And one, one of the cool things that we try to do in CTE is bring in cutting edge technology mm-hmm. into the classroom. So kids really, we meet them where they are. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we utilize is um, Transfer VR, which they use uh, the Oculus 3D mm-hmm. devices, which oh, yeah. kids use at home they in the gaming it. world today. Mm-hmm. And they really love it. So we bring it into the classroom 
classroom is career exploration. Oh, that's and so fun. they have over 38 or 40 now different SIMS areas that those students can really get into. And some of the bigger ones are like automotive oil change. They like the firefighting, the robotics, and oh, some yeah. other ones in there that are really popular, but we're trying to meet them where they are. Mm-hmm. And then one of the coolest things we have is we've purchased um, this product called ZSpace, and it's a laptop um, that you get. And really, it's like Tony Stark from Iron Man. Ooh. You can actually <laughs> take a stylus pull it out of the screen right in front of you and you can manipulate it with that stylus and you can pull it apart. Like let's say you're looking at a water pump. You can pull the water pump apart. You can see the calipers and the springs and the washers and wow. all that. That is wild. And then you can also, you'll like this, you can also take a human heart and you can take a human heart and you can open it up and you can watch the blood flow oh, in the that's directions cool. that it's going. That's and cool. so there's so I many... I trip coming <laughs> on. Yeah. I, don't I don't know. know. I need to see this. It's, well, and it's one of those things where we just really feel like we have to meet kids where they are they're yeah. living in where technology a big part That's of what a, they're doing they would love that uh, yeah. and yeah we're looking we're always looking at new things i'm mm-hmm. attending the national ct conference in a few weeks and i'm excited to go and see what cutting edge technology is out there haven't been yet before as a director but i'm looking forward to see what else is out there what's coming emerging because it's those things that kind of engage kids mm-hmm. and kind of make them inquisitive into it really and find something that they maybe didn't know that do. they would want right. to do absolutely yeah. and it's like and they're so different today you know, well, they the kids are. are, you know, mm-hmm. I see kids today, you know, I mean, they may have several different careers, mm-hmm. you know, throughout mm-hmm. their 40 year, you know, right. working time that they spend mm-hmm. um, because there are so many different interests. Mm-hmm. There are. And, and maybe it's because they didn't have enough of an opportunity to right. learn those in school. Mm-hmm. So they kind of figure it out as they go as along they go in their along. adult Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And I think that's our job. Our job mm-hmm. is to give, give them a pathway yeah. and a safe place to kind of explore mm-hmm. and experience and just a starting really, point. A starting point just to get an idea because mm-hmm. really, honestly, I want a kid to leave eighth grade knowing one thing they don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> because if they, we can clear one thing out of the way, that's, that's one less thing they have to get in the way when they're in high school that takes those precious electives up. Yeah. But they don't have many to begin that's with right. and they have to, you know, yeah. map those out very successfully. If we're going to be a value add for them, mm-hmm. uh, and by that I mean public ed, so mm-hmm. when they graduate, we've got them positioned to be successful mm-hmm. regardless of which E they're going to go into. And so that's why it's important those last two years for credentialing, for certifications, mm-hmm. and they kids can even micro-credential within major clarity on some things and get digital badges for those and different things that's to cool. just really help them through that whole understanding mm-hmm. part. Right. That's exciting. That is so exciting. <laughs> what else do y'all have going on? Because I know that's just one <laughs> oh, that's, that's a, of it. Yeah, that's just the bottom layer. So really, so one of my big things starting out is I really wanted to take um, middle school because when I came on board, I saw that we were, you know, we had middle school working. We had high school working. But obviously high school takes a lot more work and uh, different uh, equipment and different things. So I looked at middle school and thought, okay, what can we do to engage our middle school kids into getting ready for that high school path? So we've created three different um, options. We've got a sixth grade, a seventh grade, and an eighth grade um, really kind of a career development experience that we have for each of them. So the first one we have for sixth grade is called Careers on Wheels, Mm -hmm. where we host it annually, and we allow all of our sixth graders in Iredell County. We do this in conjunction with Mooresville Graded uh, as a part of Iredell Ready, but we come together, all sixth graders, just for them to get a chance to see, touch, hear, and maybe experience something about a job that they may not know. For example, Piedmont Healthcare. They know the doctors and nurses, but they may not know that there's all kind of public relations, mm-hmm. HR, and those Allied other health kind of, positions. Yes, so all many those other jobs. Yes, all those. So it's an opportunity uh, when you guys are there and they talk to you to just share it all about what you know what um, Piedmont Healthcare is, and that goes for every business. I want them to know that if there's a Target truck rolling down the road, there's more to Target than the person that checks you okay. out or the person driving the truck. There's so much more to that, right. and so that's the important part of Careers on Wheels. And then for seventh grade. We've created a STEAM on the go, which for CTE is science, technology, engineering, and advanced manufacturing. And so we take that and we let seventh graders, we let each of the middle schools have a competition in the fall. And then we take school winners, we bring them uh, to the district level in April each year, and we let them compete against each other. And we have a school winner. We honor the top three that went in that. And it's really cool to see those kids really come in and develop through stations of different things as it relates to to different STEAM activities. And then for eighth grade, uh, brand new for this year, uh, we're doing an eighth grade event called Eighth Grade on the Move. And it's motivational outreach via experiences. And so that is really 
bringing our eighth graders in uh, to the Civic Center for two days. We'll bring like a small group in the morning and afternoon on both days. And the goal is to have one session where they just find out about high school options. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Early college, uh, Mitchell Community College, CCP courses, and um, CATS courses, all of those different options they have in high school. Then we'll have a section on um, what is it to get registered for high school? What is that process going to look like? Because they're on the they're on the heels of, of doing that. And then one of them will be really the academic career planning piece, which we've added for this school year for students in eighth grade and 10th grade or really now seventh grade and 10th grade. Um, for those kids to do an academic career plan at the end of seventh grade, revisit it again at the end of 10th grade, just to kind of get them an oh. idea of where they're going. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, based in major clarity. And then we want to bring in that session about academic career planning and then how major clarity can bring it all together between working on graduation. Wow. And then the last session will be a fun opportunity for them to do some career exploration, again, through Transfer VR, using ZSpace and those things. So we're going to do it conference style. Oh. So they'll rotate around the four for the day. I can't or wait. For the morning and for the afternoon. So that's... That, we're really excited about that because wow. that really it's it's meeting each group kind of where they are yeah. career development wise and with our eighth graders we're finding that we can't over communicate about high school and so we really want to take this opportunity to drill down to them in small groups of you know 75 to 80 um really all we can that day to make sure that we're wow. that we've got them connected and i love that y'all are doing middle school because it's, I mean, by the time they get into high school, a lot of things have happened and they've already sort of made up their minds one way or the other. I think middle really... school is probably the toughest and oh, mm -hmm. for, for me. Mm -hmm. You know, elementary, you're working with the parents are still really involved. Middle school, parents are still really involved, but the kids are uh, maybe not kids anymore. They're not adults and they're trying to figure it out. It's just a tough time for them. On top of, they've got to try to figure out because if you don't, you really need a plan. You mm -hmm. need to be thinking about what you're going to do in high school because yes. you don't want to waste your time. I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, you don't have a lot of credit hours anyway, so you want to make the best use of that. Mm -hmm. You do not. And I think that the big thing is when you get into eighth grade and you're really thinking about high school, and when people say, well, that's putting a lot of pressure on eighth graders. Well, no, it's not. It's letting them know that, hey, this is like, I equate it to like a digital etch-a-sketch. You're going to put down what you think your career plan is going to be in seventh grade. Okay. Every year you're in school till 10th grade, that's going to shake a little and change a little. And you can go into major clarity and make those changes mm -hmm. anytime because it's, it's the kid's plan. It is individualized for each one of those students. And so as they get uh, more exposure and more exploration and more experiences, they're able to refine, hopefully, what that career plan is going to look like so that when they're registering again for 11th grade, they've declared that E, and then they know what course avenues they want to take, and then we can be a value add to them through those, again, credentials mm -hmm. and certifications to get them poised to be um, successful at the end and hopefully be competitive. If they're going to be enlisted, if they're going to be enrolled, or they're going to go to work right after high school or be an entrepreneur, that whatever they're going to be, we prepared them to be the best they can be when it comes time to, to, to yeah. launch into that, whatever that might be. Wow. As a parent and maybe parents that might be watching, what, how do we uh, get into that major clarity and can we see what our kid has done or is it more is it kind of a private? No, no, no. They can. What I would suggest to all parents mm -hmm. do in middle school is just ask their students about major clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, ask them to uh, get their device out mm -hmm. or on their home computer, mm -hmm. log into it, and just really walk mom and dad through what that looks like mm -hmm. and um, show them their career interest surveys because I think it's career test drive. Mm -hmm. So what major clarity calls it and looking at those and kind of see what's out there, especially for seventh graders who are going to start building that academic mm -hmm. career plan this year. What does that really look like? I have like? A seven, two seventh graders, so <laughs> yeah. I'm really <laughs> yeah. so, so what that's going to look like and that whole academic planning piece, mm -hmm. now that's brand new this year. Okay. The state superintendent through legislation has just uh, passed it that it's required for 7th grade and 10th grade. Okay. We had already said we were going to do right. it, you know, for us for 8th and 10th grade, but they decided they wanted to do it at 7th mm -hmm. grade. So we're going to do 7th grade and 10th grade. Mm -hmm. But it really is an opportunity for a student to start, start thinking about that mm -hmm. because it's never really, I think, 7th or 8th grade is a great time to really start thinking thinking about, again, because hopefully at the end of eighth grade, they know something they don't want to do. That's mm -hmm. right. That's you know, if they've done something with blood or something, like, oh, my You're gosh, right. sorry, Jeff, <laughs> but health care is, <laughs> is not for me. I mean, that's why Tim Woody's in education and not health care, because that's not <laughs> Or wait until you're in college and realize, oh, I that's can't what do this. I was say, much yeah. better than you've spent that first and I, year of that college. that was my experience. Exactly, yeah. I found out something yeah. I didn't like while mm -hmm. I was in college, and I had to. And you know, I found, and I love the fact you're doing the 7th and 10th, because I found my boys, 
maybe not so ready at seventh grade. Mm-hmm. They have some ideas, but sure. their their maturity mm-hmm. at, at 10th grade, they have a much better idea. My daughter, I knew she was going to be a teacher from mm-hmm. when she was two, putting her baby dolls and teaching them <laughs> on the floor. I knew what was going to happen, yeah. and that never changed. Yeah, that's but with the boys, you know, there there were several points that they changed and, and, and grew. So I love the fact that you're, you know, reevaluating that at 10th mm-hmm. to say, okay, th- you know, where is it you really want to be, and how can we help you, you know, advance that and be ready for that career or for that university. Absolutely. And I think it's important to also say that we can revisit that at eighth grade and ninth grade as well to help those kids as a parent. Mm-hmm. If you want to come in and look at say, hey, what's your career plan look like? And we'll take a look at that and kind of see and they can talk through it. Because I think it's going to give the parents insight into their kid a little bit more if they've never had them take an interest survey before around careers and things. It really may open both of their eyes mm-hmm. up into something they really did not know they had a gift for. And I think that's the coolest thing about middle school was watching a kid develop a gift. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the really fun thing about this. And then high high school uh, in ninth grade, watching them find it or bring it to high school and kind of refine it and then watch it grow Mm -hmm. and see. And that's probably one of the coolest things about my job Mm -hmm. is looking at and kind of watching, you know, everything that we have going on and just watching kids go go and flourish. You know, I think about our career and technical student organizations we have like FFA and FBLA Mm -hmm. and DECA and HOSA and all those things. And just how, um, kids really flourish into that with leadership skills and different things in those things. So CTE can offer so much right. to our kids at so many levels. And the best thing about it, Jeff, is it's all free. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the great thing about it is that, you know, it's one of those things to where kids should really, you know, share with their parents what's going on in major clarity, what's going on in their classes with CTE. And uh, because that's one of our biggest struggles in education, I think, is getting parents the Mm -hmm. message, Mm -hmm. getting them to hear it. You know, we try things and some come, some don't, and just trying to figure out how to do that message. So we're always working Mm -hmm. on how to improve that message at all. Well, I know uh, our dinner table topic's going to be tonight. (laughs) Talk to me about your major clarity. That's right. Let me know about that. (laughs) Pull that up right now for me, please. Oh, we're going to do it. That's right. I want to see that. We talked about it. I remember the first time I ever heard him. I heard it from you probably Mm -hmm. um, for the first time, of course. And then when they were starting it. And then I think last year, I remember my kid grumbling about something he had to do. And I was like, what you working on? He goes, oh, it's just this thing called major clarity. I don't even know what it is. I was like, my, my ears <laughs> perked up. And I was like, oh, Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Mom awesome. knows what it is. So, right. you know, I was like, well, this is serious. Take it serious, mm-hmm. you know. But I just remember him like, blah, 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 you know, gr- grumbling about it. But so I haven't brought it up again in a while. So now it's that I'm, now Now's that I know seventh time. grade, which you are doing with seventh grade, I'm going to be mm-hmm. more, more in, uh, intense, intentional That's right. about that. And probably, you know, one of the last things, um, I think that we're working on really is we've talked a little bit for a couple of years since I've been here, the principal of CATS and myself, we've talked about really how to bring aviation oh, to yeah. CATS because oh, that's yeah. one of our emerging markets And we have that in the new area. Uh, business that's yes, at the airport, Jet, Jet, Jet East. Jet East. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's huge. So we've been in conversation with Jet East. We've been in conversation with a subsidiary of American Airlines and trying to work with them to hopefully put things together so that we could start an aviation uh, program at CATS next year. The first phase would be probably um, aviation mechanics. Nice. That seems to be the largest, but yeah. a lot of people don't realize this, Jeff. But in mechanics for aviation, if kids go through this program and we have the certification set up and they get into out of high school going into work for uh, the an airport, within probably three years, those are six-figure salaries. Wow. And there's 872,000 currently open across the country. Wow. Wow. All right. and Y'all hearing that? <laughs> Another <laughs> conversation for the boys Career tonight. Career change is coming. <laughs> and <laughs> for then, some parents, they're like, wait a minute. And then the second That's part wild. we hope to bring eventually uh, would be the pilot's group uh, and talking they're, because they're aging out aren't they the they're pilot? aging mm-hmm. out in airlines as many other industries mm-hmm. are they are reevaluating their don't entry me, into the market don't tell me they're gonna have um you know self-flying planes because that will <laughs> freak me out <laughs> no i haven't seen that yet <laughs> okay but the big thing is is just bringing more kids directly out of high school into programs so that they can self-teach. 
oh, yeah. uh, with a credential. They come from certain information. Just like now we offer drones and they can get their federal drones yeah. license after drone one. Mm-hmm. And there's all kind of job markets now that you are using drone mm-hmm. technology. You can be a drone pilot. And, you know, those jobs make anywhere from fifty to 80000 a year, depending on where you're at. Well, local engineering you know, firms are using mm-hmm. drones to do surveying. And I was things. going to say mm-hmm. surveying. There's a lot of our real estate companies, yep. insurance companies. Mm-hmm. Lots of folks you wouldn't think about using drones are using them mm-hmm. uh, for various reasons. But we're really hoping that we can make that happen. And we're really excited to have um, that group coming uh, to Careers on Wheels uh, okay. to really showcase some things That'd that they're doing there with pilots, stewardess, and, and um, the airline mechanics as well. You guys are busy. Every day. So well, <laughs> I want to say thank you because yeah. I think it's so exciting that we're not just focusing on everybody going to a four-year university that may not be right for everybody, mm-hmm. but we're trying to meet every kid, I think you said earlier, where they are yes. and try to help them prepare for their future, whatever that looks like. And if 70% of those, those kids, when they graduate, are not ready to go to the community college, to the tech school, to the university at that point, what can we do to, to help them get, and that's one of the things we're looking at at Piedmont, what can we do internally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to help them get certifications if they sure. don't have them, but working with things like the global initiative that we're working mm-hmm. with, those kids, how many um, industries we have here in Idle County mm-hmm. that have a global mm-hmm. flair? Lots and lots. lots mm-hmm. of and, them, and, and David said we talked about it last yeah, time. things you don't even think Absolutely, of. but mm-hmm. the apprenticeship, the internships. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and our, our businesses and, and, you know, the Dusans, the Denzos, the Piedmont Health Cares, the Idle Health Systems, we are all looking... Mm-hmm. You know, and we so appreciate all that you guys are doing Mm -hmm. to try to help us, Mm -hmm. you know, have employees so that we can take care of patients so that we can continue to produce Absolutely. here in Iredale. So it's um, it's just a, it's, it's a great opportunity for the businesses and for the school to work together. And mm-hmm. we appreciate all the time that you guys um, put into it to try to help us. Well, ditto to that. Thank you for the community. We've got a great community of partners that come alongside and want to help each other grow. And I guess if I could, you know, say one thing uh, final to the parents or their middle schoolers is just sit down and have a conversation mm-hmm. around really where are you in thinking about what you would like to do? Start that conversation and then let that lead into major clarity. Let that lead into some career discoveries. Let mom and dad sit down with you and do a career study. Mm -hmm. What you go through one on major clarity. And it's really interesting, um, I think, really the feedback that they'll receive from that because kids really, uh, they're kind of shy about Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I think if parents will, again, I love just meeting kids where they are because, you know, in order to get them where we want them to be, we have to meet them where we are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I read a quote uh, recently, and I know it's been around a long time, but you really, you can only lead at the speed of trust. Mm-hmm. And I think that with, uh, in my role, I'm just really trying to lead very methodically and uh, carefully so that we're not leaving any student behind, that we're trying to be able to kind of do a stop gap and reach back and pull yeah. them forward so that we get everyone ready uh, to make that career decision, you know, in high school and be ready to go. Well, thanks. Thank you, Tim. You are very welcome. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Yes.